Hey guys, it's Kasera, and today I'm gonna to be doing my end of May reading vlog. So if you've been paying attention to my channel, no, I did not do a beginning of May reading vlog. I didn't do regular weekly reading vlogs in May, mostly because I've been really busy, so I haven't gotten around to doing a lot of reading. Now, I have been able to listen to audiobooks, like in my spare time, but I haven't gotten around to actually physically picking up a book until this week in a while. I did like film reading vlogs for the beginning of the month, but they were just really boring because it's for a bunch of audiobooks that I kind of just like, I enjoyed. I didn't love, I didn't hate, I didn't have very strong opinions about any of these audiobooks, and they're audiobooks. So there's like no B-roll to go with it. So it's just like me talking to the camera being like, it was good, and that's about it. So it's just like, this is a reading vlog. They're not worth putting out for you guys. So I decided to just not put out those reading vlogs. But the main reason I did a reading vlog this week was because I still had four books that I needed to read for the Book to Best of Awards. I'm gonna go into the vlog now, and I will check back with you guys at the end. Hey guys, I know. I've been MIA for like a couple of weeks now. I just kind of stopped posting things on YouTube, which I'm really sorry about. But mostly is because I haven't really been reading. I haven't had content for you guys. So I did listen to a lot of audiobooks for the first half of the month. Last week, I didn't read anything like at all. I have a couple of days today, tomorrow and Saturday in which I have a lot of time so I'm gonna try and get some reading done in those days because I'm really behind on the booktube SFF award read-along. So it's Thursday, May 23rd, and I do have not as much time starting on Sunday. So I have a lot of time over the next three days that I'm going to try and get some reading done. It's pretty late in the day already, but I do have a few hours left and I have four books for the booktube SFF awards that I wanna try and finish during this time so, because I'm not gonna have too much time towards like the m closer to the end of the month. Four books that I have to read. The first one is Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Rowanhorse. This is not for the debut category. I've actually already started it. I'm right about there. I started this one today and there's like less than 100 pages left. So I think I could finish this one tonight and start on one of the other ones. I am enjoying it so far. I didn't like the first chapter very much, which I feel like most people do like the first chapter because it's pretty action packed, but I really didn't like the way it was done. I'll talk about it more when I'm talking about the book more, but I do enjoy it otherwise. It's urban fantasy, which is not entirely my thing. I don't read a lot of urban fantasy. It's also post-apocalyptic fantasy which is always just weird to me. I don't know why. I feel like some people really like urban fantasy and really like post-apocalyptic fantasy. And if you do, you'll probably love this, but they're just not tropes that I generally read. So it's a little weird for me, but at the same time, I'm enjoying it right now. So I'm excited to see how it ends. The next one is The Calculating Stars by Mary Robinette Cole. This is nominated for best sci-fi. It's an alternate universe. So I've actually read the first chapter of it. I was trying to decide between Trail of Lightning and Calculating Stars, which one to read. I read the first chapter for both of them and I wasn't too much happy with the first chapter of this one either. I, and I ended up reading the other one instead. I'm thinking about picking up one of the other books and then reading this one afterwards. Cause I don't know, it just, it doesn't seem like my thing. And I was really excited for this one too, because it's the book one in the Lady Astronaut series, which just sounds like the type of series that I would like to read and it's alternate universe. But it's like, I don't know, it just feels similar to urban fantasy feel just with sci-fi instead of fantasy, if that makes sense. And it's just, I don't know, again, just not my thing and it's just weird to me. So we'll see if I like this one, but I haven't, I've only read like the first chapter of it, so I really don't know yet, but this is the second one that I have to read. The next one I'm actually really excited for and that's Grey's Sister by Mark Lawrence. So I'm thinking about starting this one next just because I'm so excited for it. It is the second book in the Book of the Ancestors series. This is nominated for the best fantasy. So yeah, I'm really, really excited for this one. So I'm thinking about starting this one later. It's just under 400 pages, so they're pretty big 
because I think the Calculating Stars is 400 pages. Skyward looks huge. I'm almost done with Trail of Lightning though, so I'm excited to see what's going on with Nona. So pretty excited about this one. Hopefully I'll get to this one soon. I might skip this one and do this one last just because I'm so excited for it. It'll be the easiest one to read last, if that makes sense. But I'm really, really tempted to pick it up next. And the fourth one is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I don't know if I'm gonna like this one. This is one that again, I'm hesitant on. I think this one has the potential of being really quick, even though it's so big. How many pages is this? Just wondering. Ooh, I love the purple inside. Yeah, it's 500 something pages. So it's the biggest of the four books. It's the largest. I think it has the potential of being very fast just because it's Brandon Sanderson and it's YA. So I think it has the potential of being very fast. So I don't think like it should take too long for me to read. But at the same time, I'm a bit worried about this one just because I've read his YA sci-fi before and I actually didn't like it, even though Brandon Sanderson is one of my adult high fantasy favorite authors. I'm excited, but I'm skeptical. So we'll see how this goes. So I'm gonna continue on with Trail of Lightning and I will talk to you guys a little bit later. Like a Rowan horse. So first I'm gonna start with what I liked. I really really love the world building in this book. It's a post-apocalyptic urban fantasy book. It's set after like the current modern era has been kind of been demolished. They call it the big water. It kind of sounds like global warming sort of maybe maybe not but like there's floods there's big storms and stuff like that there's droughts in like California and places like that so it's just like the weather kind of takes over the world and the Native Americans kind of take back the land, which is just a really cool concept. I absolutely love it. Something happens during this big water that allows magic and gods and all of that back into the world. And it's very interesting in that sense. But other than that, there wasn't a whole lot that I really enjoyed about this book. Like the plot moved forward very quickly. Like it's less than 300 pages. It moved forward very quickly, but it's kind of one of those winding plots that it reminds me a little bit, very slightly of The Gunslinger by Stephen King. And I think part of it that reminds me about that is because that's also a post-apocalyptic urban fantasy sort of book. That was a little bit more high fantasy than urban fantasy, but it kind of has that like quest where you have this main character who is traveling through this world searching for something. I didn't like The Gunslinger, by the way. I like this book better than The Gunslinger. It just like, there was something she was searching for, she was looking for, and it was a mystery sort of, but I felt like the clues weren't put in a way that drove the plot forward for me. I kind of guessed it really early on and there was really nothing there for me to second guess about it. I wanted to make sure that I was right, but at the same time, there weren't really any other options in my opinion. And I didn't really understand how the characters didn't see this coming from a mile away, right? There's a bunch of reveals and revelations towards the end. And I honestly just didn't care about any of them because it seemed obvious to me, even though there wasn't even a whole lot of setup to make the revelation seem bigger than they were. I don't know how to explain that. The plot just didn't really work for me too much because I found it to be a little bit boring at times, even though there's a lot of action in it. There is a lot of action, but for me, action doesn't really mean anything if there aren't really emotions attached to it. And I didn't really feel very emotional about it, if that makes sense. There's also like two kind of romantic subplots. I didn't feel really anything about the romantic subplots. I think part of it was just like they were so obviously trying to make it feel romantic like in the beginning like there was a lot of people telling us that there's these romantic connections between these characters and I didn't feel it like I didn't see the characters actually connecting romantically until like close to the end but even then I still didn't really feel it. That being said I liked the very end. Like I liked the very end. I felt like it could have been a little bit longer. I felt like there could have been a really good epilogue to this. And I don't know, it was not my favorite. I don't like the main character either. I really don't like her. I feel like I should like, 
she's one of those characters that I feel like I should like, but I, I just, I don't. I ended up giving 3.5 stars. I still recommend this. If you like urban fantasy, if you like post-apocalyptic fantasy, I think you'll like this. Like, it's fast-paced. It has a lot of action in it. It's just not the type of book that I would normally pick up, if that makes sense. So, like, I'm glad I picked it up because I it was definitely out of my comfort zone. But at the same time, it's, it's definitely not one of my favorites. So, yeah. 3.5 stars. Now I think I'm going to start Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. It's the longest of the four books that I have to read, so I want to start it. I don't know how much I will read tomorrow of it. Hopefully I'll get to it tomorrow because, yeah. So hopefully I'm going to like it. I feel like this is one of those books that I could either love or hate, and hopefully I'll like it. So I'm going to get started on this, and I will talk to you guys later. Okay, so it's Saturday evening, and I know I said I would vlog the last couple of days, and I just, I didn't. But I started and made a lot of progress with Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I am right there now, so I'm pretty far into it. I'm really enjoying it. Like, I'm really, really, really enjoying it. I love the main character. I love how much drive she has. There are some sort of themes in here that I'm not liking, but I think that the main character is gonna grow out of them, in which case, I'm gonna really, really like it. There's just nothing like a Brandon Sanderson fight scene. There's there's nothing like it. I don't think I've read any other authors that made me feel that much adrenaline in a battle scene, except for maybe George R. R. Martin. Clash of Kings, Battle of, um, I can't even remember it now. Battle of the Blackwater, Clash of Kings. That was probably my favorite battle that I like ever read. But other than that, love Brandon Sanders in fight scenes. So much adrenaline in it. I feel like most fight scenes are more about how the character feels, but like with these, like all the logistics of the fighting, you get to feel that and be in there. And oh, it's just so well done. And like, it's not even hand to hand. Like you would think hand to hand combat would be more adrenaline pumping than this, but somehow this is more to me. I think, I don't know, the stakes are higher. So far, really, really enjoying it. So, so happy that I picked it up. So yeah, I'm gonna continue on with this one and hopefully finish it tonight. And I might have some time to start the next book. I'm thinking, Grey Sister? Yeah, I should do the Calculating Stars. I should do the Calculating Stars, but I'm thinking Grey Sister because I'm just that, I'm in that kind of mood right now because Brandon Sanderson and Mark Lawrence have similar writing styles and I feel like it would be a good compliment to this one even though like this is not adult high fantasy, this is YA sci-fi. It's still like the action scenes are adult high fantasy worthy. So yes, first I want to finish Skyward. So I'm going to do that now gonna finish it. I have like less than 100 pages left. Less than 100? No, I have more than 100. There's 500 pages in here. I have 150 pages left, about. So it's gonna take a little while, but I'm gonna go do that, and I will check in with you guys later. So I just finished Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. And this was so good. It was so, so good. Just the ambition, the drive, the the adrenaline, the battle scenes were so good. The internal conflicts and the growth that this character has is, oh, it's just so well done. I absolutely loved it. Like, I was just so attached to this book throughout the whole thing. I don't even know what else to say. It was so good. Five stars. Like, 100% five stars. I'm so glad that I bought this book and that I read this book. Like, so, so glad. This book was like nearly perfect in execution. It was so, so well done. Absolutely, absolutely loved it. I'm back. So I finished Skyward a lot faster than I was expecting to because I had like 150 pages. So I put out like a bunch of time to read those 150 pages and I read them really, really fast. So I had a, quite a bit of time that I set out to read tonight before I have to go to sleep. So I have two more books that I really, really want to finish before the end of the month. So we have The Calculating Stars by Mary Robinette Cole and Grey Sister by Mark Lawrence. And that's all I have left. And I'll be done with all the read-alongs for the Booktube Best of Awards, which is fantastic. And like, I can't believe it's only one week and I only have two books left. I don't know how that was possible because like a couple days ago, there was four books left and it seemed like I could not possibly read that much in one week and yet somehow like, it's doable now. Anyways, I want to start into one of these tonight. I'm in kind of a sort of adrenaline junkie mood after Skyward. So I'm going to pick up Grey Sister because 
Mark Lawrence has a similar writing style to Brandon Sanderson. I haven't, I've only read one book by Mark Lawrence. I've read Red Sister by Mark Lawrence, obviously. He has kind of a similar vibe as Brandon Sanderson does in Mistborn in this series. I liked Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn series a little bit better than uh, The Book of the Ancestor, but still really, really excited for it. So I'm gonna start Grey Sister and hopefully I can finish this tomorrow. We'll see. I read two books in three days, so it's possible if I can finish this tomorrow and then I can get to the calculating stars because I'm really hoping that I can finish this really, really soon. So I'm going to do this and I will check in with you guys later. channel for a while then you know I've been starting to do audiobook rereads of some of my favorite books like before bed so I didn't realize this but I was really close to the end of the book yesterday so last night I ended up finishing The Great Hunt by Robert Jordan this is the second book in the Wheel of Time series so I'm planning on going through the entire Wheel of Time series on audio and they're like 24 hours each so like there's a lot because there's 14 books that are like 24 hours each but it's so good. I just feel like I'm in this world, you know what I mean? The first book I ended up giving it five stars again because I really liked it and this one I had given it four stars. I think for me this time around it was like 4.5 stars. Like there was there were so many good things about this book but it just it didn't excite me as much as the first one did if that makes sense. I still really enjoyed it. I really love these characters. Like love, love these characters. And I love this world. Absolutely love this world. It's not a perfect book. It's one of my favorites. It's definitely one of my favorites. So I finished this one and I ended up picking up the third book in the series, which is The Dragon Reborn. And I think I remember this one being one of my favorites or maybe one of my least favorites. I'm not sure which. So we're gonna find out. Because these books, there's so many of them that like the plots for the books kind of all like blend together and you're not really sure which book is which and I remember this one one of my favorite characters is not in it but I don't remember if I didn't like it because of that or if I liked it more because I got to know the other characters better I don't know I don't remember but I'm excited to get to this one obviously I'm not going to be spending a whole lot of time on this just because I want to finish my physical books I just thought I would update you guys on that and I will hopefully be getting to Grey Sister today so I can try and finish it. I don't know, I only read one chapter yesterday, so I still have a lot, a lot to go with Grey Sister. So I'm a little bit nervous because Grey Sister's going quite a bit slower than Skyward did. Then again, I Skyward was a 500 page book that I read in two days and I didn't really have that much time on those two days to read. So yes, it's slower, but I think I can do it and I'm excited, so. I'll check in with you guys later. So it's Sunday evening and I had to go to work today, but I realized that I never checked Scribe to see if they had the audiobook for Grey Sister because I'm not currently listening to an audiobook because I had those four physical books that I really wanted to finish this week for the BookTube SFF Award read-alongs. I had never checked if Grey Sister was available on audio at Scribed. I knew it wasn't available at my library and I knew I was gonna buy the book anyway, so I didn't really like look too into it. But since the other three weren't available, I decided to check Scribe for this one and it is available. Actually, Holy Sister's also available. So I'll probably end up listening to that audiobook also. So at work today, I just, I really wanted to listen to the audiobook. I wanted to continue on. So I started listening to the audiobook for Grey Sister. And with audiobooks, I get through them so fast. So I'm like right about there. First of all, I absolutely love the audiobook. Like it was after like maybe two minutes, I was like, oh my gosh, I love this audiobook narrator. So I like started looking up other audiobooks that she narrated that I want to listen to just because I really like the narrator, even though like they're not necessarily books that I would normally pick up like anyway, but really, really love this audiobook narrator. So I'm super, super excited. Absolutely love the audiobook. That being said, I'm not enjoying this as much as I wanted to. I was gonna say that like nothing's happening, but like things are happening. I'm like the entire time though, I'm just kind of like, why is this happening? This seems like 
I don't know. It doesn't seem impactful, if that makes sense. Like, I felt a little bit that way about Red Sister also. Like, the first, like, three quarters of Red Sister, I really, really enjoyed. But, like, the ending, I was just kind of like, this, this doesn't, like, it doesn't make me feel anything. And I wanted to feel, like, like, really feel the story. Like, feel the desperation or the, like, the hurt or, you know what I mean? I wanted to feel the emotions with the characters. And I'm just not feeling that with this. Like, Nona is really the only character that I, like, I feel like I know, but I still don't feel as much with her as I want to, if that makes sense. I love this world. I really love this magic. I wish we understood the magic more than we get in the book. Like, I wish I understood it a little bit better. I wish I knew the characters a little bit better. I wish I knew this world a little bit better. So, like, it's like, I'm almost like the action is overtaking all of the other things for, for the storyline that I really want to know. And I'm not getting those things because there's these, these fight scenes instead. I like it. I'm enjoying it. But I feel like I'm missing something. So, I don't know. I don't know how it's going. I really wanted to like this book, though. Also, like, the first half, I really wanted out of this book, like, because the first book, right, Nona, the main character, goes to this, like, magic school, sort of. Not really. It's like a magic school setting, sort of, but it's not specifically magic school. It's more like an assassin school. Anyways, my point is, she's in school, and she's like, training, right? So, like, a good portion of this one, she's still in school training, and I had, like, I had assumed from like some of the scenes that you get in the previous one about like where the future is. When we get to Grey Sister, like we would be in that future state. We're not there yet, which makes me a little sad, especially considering that like the very first chapter is like two years later. So I was like, oh good, we're in the future state. And then it's just like, oh, she's still in school two years later. How? So I'm a little disappointed right now. But that doesn't mean it's not good because I was just super hyped for this book. Like I've been anticipating this book since January, since I read Red Sister. So like, obviously I had very high expectations for it. I've come down a little bit, but I'm still really enjoying it and I'm excited to finish it. But since I have the audiobook for it, which I can listen to tomorrow while I'm at work, I'm not going to continue on with it tonight. So I'm on like chapter 30 now, so I'm pretty far into it. I don't have very much left. So I'll definitely be finishing this tomorrow at work because it's it's all, it's like six hours on an audiobook and one and a half speed. That's like, trust me, I'll, I'll get it done. So I think it's about time I start the calculating stars. So I don't know what to expect with this. I know it's the first novel in the Lady Astronaut series and it's supposed to be like an alternate universe setting, which I've never read anything like that before, but the idea of it definitely intrigues me. So I'm excited for it, but at the same time, I'm a little nervous because it's a little bit out of my comfort zone. Yeah, so we'll see how this goes. I'm hoping that I like it. Like I really, really want to like it. So I hope I like it and I'm gonna go ahead and read this and I will check in with you guys later. here. I just want to say, I think I'm going to like this. I think I'm really going to like this. It's set in a very interesting time period in the 1950s, 1952 to be exact. And what happens for the alternate time period is that a meteorite hits Washington, DC. So this is a very interesting time period because this is just after World War II finished. So we're in like the middle of the Cold War, like the very beginning of the Cold War, actually not even in the middle, in the beginning of the Cold War, when the entire US government is basically destroyed. So it's very interesting time period because of that. Also there are, in the US, I feel like the 1950s were a very interesting time period in themselves because you have the civil rights movement going on not just for African Americans, but also for women in that time was very interesting. So it definitely has a lot of like cultural things 
that'll be interesting. And then the sci-fi aspect to it is very interesting also because of course we have the meteor strike and they're talking about like rockets and the Manhattan Project. Oh my gosh. Oh, also there's other, there are other like things that they mentioned. Like there was a former Nazi that they mentioned, which is just an interesting thing to think about also because like in our time period, like there aren't people who actually worked for the Nazis that are still alive, at least not that I know of. Like that was, you know, going on a hundred years ago now. But in this time period, obviously it only happened seven years ago. So Nazis are still alive, even though like they don't have any power, they're still alive. So like seeing how Nazis in the aftermath are treated also is very interesting. So I'm liking it so far, like I'm into it. So I'm happy about this. I am gonna continue reading it tonight, but I will check in with you guys again in the morning. It's Monday morning and I am, I did not finish the calculating stars, no. I just started it last night. That's not gonna happen anytime soon. I finished part one of the calculating stars. I am on part two now. I really, really enjoyed part one. It has such great setup for the rest of the series. Part one, by the way, like, the plot that you see here is not all in part one. So like part of the back time of the plot on the back of the book is actually in part two. So like anything I say here is not really a spoiler, but I'll still try and keep it mostly spoiler free. I really like Elma. Elma York is the main character here. And I really like her as a character. But in part one, I was just, I was really disappointed by her a couple times and I think like they did that purposefully so that she can grow as a character and I don't know if I like that they did that that way maybe I do maybe I don't I don't know I just I just feel like that's not her like some of the things that she did but otherwise I really really like all of the setup because it talks about climate change right in a way that is like this is obvious this is gonna happen but like it's a it's different than our climate change it's not the same but it's one of those things where like you have to explain it in a way that people who are just looking outside and looking up at the weather aren't gonna see it happening but it's still inevitable which I liked also there's like little parts of it where like you can see where people are being very sexist or racist and things like that. Like for example, there was a meteorite, right? That hit Washington DC just off the coast, right? So the military is flying in planes to bring out refugees from those areas. And they keep talking about how they keep getting refugees in and it's like a month later and Elmo looks at the plane and she's surprised because she sees a black man walk off the plane. This is the first black refugee that they've gotten and it's a month after the the meteorite hit so like it's a month later and there's still tons of people in these areas and the military being the racist military that they were from the 1950s wouldn't change their landing sites into black neighborhoods so that they can pick up the black refugees they only did it in white neighborhoods so it it had until they can get a civilian plane to go and drop flyers into the black neighborhoods so that the black people would know where to go to get picked up and it was just like it was a tiny tiny part of the first part that like it was mentioned barely in passing just hurt like that just hurt so much i like mm, i understand their mindsets right but it's oh, it's so bad but it's so realistically done and like that's not the point of the story like that's just like a side note but it's obviously like that's what would happen if in 1952 a meteorite hit Washington DC like that is exactly what would have happened but it still hurts you know so really realistically done really really enjoying this obviously I'm not gonna finish this today I will probably finish it before the end of the week so I will be able to give you my whole thoughts on it. But so far, really, really like the setup, really, really like the world building, and I like the characters so far. So really, really excited to finish this book. I haven't made any progress in Grey Sister since we last spoke, but I'm I'm pretty far into it. I will be finishing this one today. So if I have time tonight before I upload this video, I'll give you some last minute thoughts on it after I finished it. But other than that, really really enjoyed it actually i'll put those last minute thoughts right here if i have them so you know how i said i was gonna finish gray sister today well that didn't happen i had a really busy day so i didn't end up finishing it but i will continue on with it tomorrow and you will get all of my thoughts on that at the end of the week 
when I post my monthly reading wrap up. We're gonna move on to my sort of like mini weekly wrap up. So obviously I just talked about the two books that I'm still currently reading that I'm hoping to finish before the end of the week. So it'll be my wrap up, which I plan to post on Saturday. I did however finish three books this week. I finished these three books this week. The first one was Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Roanhorse. Obviously I was reading this one because it's nominated for Best Debut for the BookTube SFF Awards. It's urban fantasy, which I didn't realize going in. Maybe I did. I don't know. I didn't really think about it going into it. So I think maybe that's the reason why I had more issues with it than I normally would, because I generally don't read urban fantasy. But overall, I still really enjoyed it. And I think it's a really great debut. So I do recommend this one if you like urban fantasy, because it's really good. And it's a little gruesome too, which I actually liked. I actually liked that it went a little bit darker than your typical urban fantasy would. The next one was Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. And I absolutely love this one absolutely absolutely love this one I realized afterwards that there are a lot of reveals towards the end that I was just kind of like oh that's cool which they were like pretty big reveals that I should have felt more on like I feel like I should have had more of a reaction to but I didn't but it honestly didn't hinder my enjoyment of the book so I still stand behind the five star rating I still really really loved it and uh, I really, really like Brandon Sanderson's fight scenes. His fight scenes are so good. I might reread this book just for the adrenaline rush because it's such a fast paced book and the fight scenes, like you just feel like you're in the thick of the battle the entire time, even though like all the characters are on their own in their little planes, right? But it still feels like you're inside the battle. I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but it was just so good and I really enjoyed it. I was hesitant about it, but I'm glad I read it. Like I'm so, so glad I read it. And the last one was one of my nighttime rereads and that's The Great Hunt by Robert Jordan. This is the second book in the Wheel of Time series. One of my favorite series ever, obviously really enjoyed it. Definitely excited to move on to the third book. Okay, so that's all I have for you guys today. I do have a lot of videos coming out this week on Wednesday, maybe Thursday, most likely Wednesday. I'm hoping to put out my June TBR. Friday, I'll be posting my picks for the BookTube SFF Awards. And on Saturday, I will be posting my May wrap up. So there's tons of videos coming out to you this week. I will be continuing with weekly posts into June maybe bi-weekly if I can do two a week. We'll see how busy I am in June. I was really busy in May, so that didn't work out as much as I was hoping to, but hopefully I'll be able to do better in June. So consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of these posts. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up to support my channel. All social media links are in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.